You expect something rather out of the ordinary with a wildflower named Grass of Parnassus. Since Parnassus was the mountain dedicated in Greek mythology to the nine muses who were responsible for the liberal arts, sacred to Apollo and to Bacchus, and this was the place you had to go if you wanted to consult the world-famous oracle at the Temple of Delphi. It was given its name by no less an authority than Dioscorides, uh, the first famous first century AD physician uh, whose renowned treatise on plants used in medicine was the Bible of physicians for tens of centuries. In that expectation of something special, you won't be disappointed. The petals are something out of the ordinary for a start, purest white but with translucent veins etched into the spongy tissue, giving them a quilted look. The ovary is the prominent dome in the centre, with five stubby stigmas. But what really catches the eye are these five complex structures you will take to be stamens, if you don't know any better. You and the insect visitors that are meant to think the same thing because they're not stamens. These are staminodes, decoy or false stamens. Each looks a bit like a hand with half a dozen or more tentacle-like fingers, with what looks to be a honey-coloured droplet of nectar glistening invitingly at the end of each finger. But even though this isn't nectar, nectar is produced in two green patches on the palm where the tentacles meet. The function of these staminodes is to attract pollinating insects by deceiving them into thinking the golden droplets are the real thing. These golden knobs look so like drops of nectar, it's hard to believe they're perfectly dry. Even visiting flies are deceived, because you can sometimes see them licking the knobs repeatedly. The true stamens alternate with the staminodes and are pressed against the ovary. They mature first, one at a time, the filament lifting the anther above the dome of the ovary where it dehisses upwards so that any insect landing in the centre of the circle of glistening honey-coloured droplets is inevitably dusted with pollen. When it has done its job, the stamen bends out of the way and is succeeded by the next one. Each stamen is on duty for a day, and only after all the anthers have shed their pollen does the stigma unfold and take up its position where the anther stood one by one previously. The flower is pollinated by hoverflies and other large flies, and a variety of bees and wasps, butterflies and beetles are more occasional visitors. Clarity of the eyes was the message read in Grass of Parnassus by those best versed in the doctrine of signatures. And so the main application of Grass of Parnassus in medieval and early modern times was the preparation of uh, an astringent eye lotion distilled from the plant, the optrex of its day.